Hey, what's going on, guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is September 2nd, 2018, holiday weekend here in the United States with Labor Day, celebrating a Monday holiday. A um, little bit of a slower start to the week for trading Forex markets. When that happens, a lot of liquidity that comes through the United States with trading and with all the banks being closed on this Monday, it is going to be a little bit of a slower start to the week. So just keep that in mind when developing your routine and, and uh, checklist and um, you know, week ahead. So just keep that in mind. But um, anybody who's new to these videos, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the technical charts for all of the major foreign currency indexes for all the pairs. Then I'm going to dive into the major cross pairs. This is going to be the US dollar versus the other six currencies. And then I'm going to dive into um, my personal watch list for the week and what I'm going to be looking for going into this trading week. I also We'll do a little bit of a dive into gold, oil, and the S&P 500 to get an idea of what the uh, risk on, risk off markets, and other correlations like oil and CAD, the things of that nature. Um, but anybody who's returning these videos, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these. I really do hope you guys are still getting some enjoyment out of it. For anybody who doesn't know, I record these weekly videos as a live webinar for my students. Um, I go over all the charts and everything, close it off submit the recording and get it up on YouTube like this in the form of a recording. And then I go ahead and turn it into an open question and answer webinar with my students afterwards. I just got done the first three weeks of one of my traders, Savan and I's first uh, launch into a signal room here at CoreFX, the CoreFX technical training room. It's not necessarily a signal room. We share trade alerts throughout the week to help people learn how to trade and trade alongside us. But we also do these rolling webinars and we will have more webinars throughout the week moving forward as well as a video library of educational content that the members will have exclusive access to. So if you're not involved in this, reach out to me if you want some more details. Corey at corefxtrading.com. Core.fx on Instagram or if you have my telegram, shoot me a message. You can throw a comment on the YouTube page as well. Um, but Again, I'm going to dive into the charts here, guys. Go over everything we got going on. The end of the summer months are coming. Uh, although we did catch 1,152 pips in our signal room the last three weeks, August, one of the slower months of the year, um, it did end up being a tremendous trading month here at CoreFX. So um, that was the first three-week trial that we had for the group. We made 1,152 pips. So it was a stellar, stellar first month. Um, really looking forward to these next few months as we are seeing the end of liquidity uh, dry up that we see in the summer. You know, all the kids are going back to school, all the people are going back to work. Bankers, institutions, they're all repositioning. Everybody's going to be trading more liquidity, volatility, all that returns to the markets after the summer slow month. So we are approaching that first week of September, loaded fundamentally. So definitely be alert this week and be watching for news um, as it is going to have a big impact on price. So thank you guys again. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop blabbing here in this screen and jump into the charts. I hope you guys enjoy what you see and share any feedback you have with me. Thanks, guys. Alrighty, so diving into the charts here, starting with the Dixie. This is the US dollar index, a basket of currencies paired up against the dollar to show the overall performance of the US dollar, right? So as you guys can see here, um, we've had this, we, we've got two psychological levels labeled here. We've got this 95 and 94.50. Those are two levels we're kind of watching for right now. We've got this daily trend line in red that was broken. Then we've got this black intermediate trend line that was more newly formed. We had a first touch here. This is the uh, second touch here. I mean, the third touch is here. It does look like it could be bouncing off this, but we had a strong break of this trend line, which could be getting retested right now. Dollar looks like it could be starting to roll over. We did break a strong 95 level here. This was a level of support I was watching for. The dollar broke through it. So the dollar's kind of in an inflection point right now, right? So in this range we are in, we're kind of, um, we broke the 50 SMA, which is another sign to me that I really don't like for continuing bull moves. That's a bearish sign to me. Um, I'm going to be watching this week for if the dollar is able to break back above this 95 and pull back up to start pushing towards 96.50 to 97 and retesting this prior higher high. Or if price is going to reject this resistance at 95, which is also the 50 SMA and this broken trend line and roll over to get a little bit of a trend reversal here with the dollar and start to sell off more. As you can see, we had this very strong break above resistance, but then price immediately reversed back down and the dollar sold off all that. So um, really this week, we're just going to sit back and watch the dollar at the beginning part of the week, see how it plays out, see what it looks like. There are some trades on my watch list paired up against the dollar. So uh, what this pair does, what this index itself does won't make or break 
if I can look for a trade on my watch list. But this is definitely something that I want to keep an eye on to see the overall bias for where the dollar is headed and where I want to be positioned when it does, whether it reverses trend or continues. Euro, another one that's a pretty uh, ugly story here. We had a nice technical setup on both these pairs. We had a nice technical breakout. Price pulled back. We were looking for that to be a retest and then continue lower, but it shot right through back into the pattern and has now actually broken the upper descending trend line of this pattern. So um, really just getting mixed signals. I'll get on the euro as well. Another one here at an inflection level. We got 111 support here, and then we've got about 112.50 resistance up here. So until one of these are broken, that's really what I'll be watching for um, in this range. Price could just range about here before we do something, but um, I'm really just looking for what it does. We broke this 50 SMA, we broke above prior structure and everything in here. So we do look like what we could have forming is a trend reversal, and we do like trying to catch the early legs of trend reversals. So we would look for something like this to happen, catch the pullback on it, and then look for the longs off the pullbacks if we want to have a bias for a long euro. But another one where um, just going to kind of sit back and, and let it play out a little bit and see where price is telling us it wants to go. We don't have any set clear um, decision right now. We could be reversing this trend or we could have just had a very strong pullback within this downtrend and price is going to continue to sell off soon. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this pair as well, this uh, index as well. Uh, yen's a little bit more clear. We've been in this downtrend. We did sell off, rally. We thought we would sell off again, but we kind of sold off and then rallied a bit. But we are still in an inflection point here, right? We're still at a nice level of support and resistance. If you look left, really all in this zone, you've got a lot of indecision, right? A lot of times where price was respected. And um, what we really want to do is just wait to see if price is able to break this daily trend line and start to reverse. We've got some crisscrossing going on here with the moving averages, but I think the yen could possibly continue to sell off this week. A lot of that will come down to the risk on risk off theme we have in the markets, how the equity markets perform this week. But um, I do think that we have still a likelihood of the yen falling and this green box down here would be our target for this prior lower low. We do have a support here at 85.50 price is going to have to break. But all in all, I do think the bearishness still seems like the bias to at least get started in the week this week. Pound, um, pretty much doing, you know, as we expected, but we got more of a pop this week up to retest this lower high, up to retest this 50 SMA prior structure. Um, so we are still in a, in a beautiful downtrend, right? We are still making lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. We are still in a lower high right now. We haven't reversed this down to set or retest this lower low yet, which is what we've been watching for and what we will continue to this week. This Wednesday of the past week, we did have a really strong rally in the pound, and the pound really re remained pretty strong. Um, it was one of the top performers last week. So this is something we want to keep an eye on. The pound could reverse this 50 SMA and this gray box I've driven, drawn here is certainly the resistance I'm watching. Price could very easily come up, break through this, break the trend, and then we would look for something like that if that happens. However, right now, the ideal technical play is to look for a break of this counter trend line. Look to ride this down to the next lower low. Look for that strong momentum we saw come into the pound last week to fade away a little bit and have the bulls, the bulls leave and the bears kind of take over a little bit more um, of the pressure like we've been seeing. So uh, taking us to the Canadian dollar next, as you guys can see, what we had here as a bear flag is turning into a trend channel. Um, if you can see here with this drawing tool again, we've had price really just moving nicely up within this channel, setting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. We had a push for a higher high and now a pull back to a higher low. It's also right on support. We got a nice indecision doji candle close here on Friday. So um, although we were waiting for a break either way of this, it looks like we are still in the pattern. However, this looks like it could be the next more than likely move to be made, right? Price bounces off this support at 75.50, pushes up to at least retest this 76.50 resistance here. Um, and the 200 SMA will probably be closing in by then. Maybe we have a resistance there. Maybe we get a double top and it rolls over. Or maybe we can now start looking for longs as this shows us more clearly that we are entering into a um, you know bull market. We, we can see we are clearly above the 50 SMA. 20s crossed above the 50. So all the signs of being bullish are there now. It's just we're still getting this tight consolidation in here. We're still not getting any of those strong impulse leg type moves we like to see in trends. So um, we're being a little skeptical of this pair, but definitely still on the watch list. And a uh, strong cad is what I'll be watching this week. Um, 
Swiss Frank, I told you guys we could be watching for a break up and out of this pair a couple weeks ago. Once it did, we were looking for opportunities now to buy. We reversed trend. 20 crossed above the 50. Um, we had that golden move crossover here. Now the 20 is above the 50. Price is trading above the 2. As you can see, the past two weeks we have had some explosive moves higher. We even ripped right through the 200 SMA. But we have a long impulsive leg here. Price is exhausted. We have a long pull from the moving averages, so we need some mean reversion, whether that means we just get some choppy price action until they catch up and then we continue higher, or maybe we get a nice pullback here this week, come down into possibly this gray box in here, and then we try to catch the next move higher. Throwing Fibonacci from this prior move, that throws us right around the 382 to 50 level, so a nice Fibonacci bounce level we're at there too if we pull back to here. Um, so we'll be watching for longs on the Swiss franc, but I am certainly waiting for um, you know price to consolidate a little bit, pull back, let the moving averages catch up, let this exhaustion wear out a little bit, let the buyers come back into the market, reposition, and then catch that next move higher. So we just want to not chase this exploding price and this exploding impulse leg. We want to wait for a little bit of a pullback consolidation to then find our entry to get in. Australian dollar continues to move downward, continues this nice trend. We have hit a strong weekly support on 72 here. You can see it looking left, very strong supply zone created from this move, respected on this move. Now this is the third touch to it. Taking down the daily, you can see we have been in a nice downtrend, but we did break and close below the prior low. So we will continue to look for shorts in this pair, uh, whether this breaks through this zone and then pulls back to it, or if it pulls back now, we can look for shorting opportunities up around this 73 resistance up here. But all in all, we are still remaining bearish on the Aussie. Just want to, again, same as like with the Swiss franc, we don't want to chase this pair as it's falling. We want to wait for it to come back to us, get better discount wholesale pricing to then look to short it. All right, so that takes us to the New Zealand dollar. Um, starting here on the weekly chart, you guys can see we are still below this strong weekly support price broke a few weeks back, right? We broke lower. We had a couple candle rally up to it. I told you guys we were now retesting it and look for a sell off this week, and we did get that. Uh, was a little flat to begin the week, but then we ended selling off. We broke this counter trend line you can see here. Um, so really now, big bearish engulfing candle, followed by a second bearish candle. On this support that we're starting to break through, I'm definitely more bearish New Zealand dollar than I am bullish. And that is why we're going to be looking to find some shorts with this pair, moving down to um, uh, anywhere is below this 65.50. I think we're breaking that support level and moving lower. So we'll be keeping an eye on New Zealand dollar this week as that could be a very good potential for some short setups if we get continued sell-off off of that pair. All righty, so this takes us over to our dollar crosses, starting with the majors. Euro dollars first up. Uh, pretty ugly. Uh, really don't like anything too special about this pair. If anything, I would be saying to be looking for longs. You know, we had this this break from this pennant, price shot down, hit this support, and ripped higher, and it's just blown through every level of resistance so far from there. Blew above the 50 SMA, pulled back, and is now retesting this 116 weekly support, retesting this red counter, this red trend line that was broken and now retested, and the 50 SMA. So um, this could be a good opportunity to long it. This could be a good place. You know, we had this inverse head and shoulders where we broke the neckline, pulled back, and now we're retesting it. Um, this could be a good long opportunity, but uh, you guys know, um, unless you're new to this, you guys know the way I trade. I'm a trend trader. Uh, I don't fight trends. I don't trade things that aren't in a strong, clear trend. There's enough opportunities out there to only look for pairs that are clearly strong trending. So this is not going to be one of them. If this would have pulled back, pulled to here, this would have been good places to look for some shorts to rally it down for the next move. But we've broken structure, broken SMAs, broken trend lines, broken resistance. So this is... Um, Really just got to, like I was saying with the indexes, wait for the next position to show itself. Wait for the next move to show itself. Whether it's going to break this resistance up here and show us a nice trend reversal, then we'll start looking for longs on pullbacks. Or if it's going to break back down and come back down to this lower low, then we'll wait for maybe to bounce off this lower low and get back in on a short off of a lower high. Um, but the euro is basically at a standstill right now for me, even though there is some potential uh, pound. I do like pound to the downside versus the dollar based off this chart. As you guys can see, we're making lower lows and lower highs. We did set this strong lower low, had a nice daily pullback for a few weeks, now have hit this trend line at resistance, and we saw some initial, also the 50 SMA, um, as you can see under this trend line here, and we saw some initial sell-off bearishness off of it. 
Again, taking it down the lower time frames, counter trend lines are great confirmations that we can use to enter trend continuations after pullbacks. So this is something we could use. You know, we got multiple layers of support and resistance in here. We can also use as additional confirmation for our entries. But um, all in all, this pair is definitely more bearish than anything to me. I wouldn't jump right in now. Um, there are some strategies you could have, you know, where maybe you short it off of this bearish engulfing break off this trend line and zone. Maybe you got to stop up above this zone here, target down here. That could be a good risk to reward, but um, I would just make sure you have a set strategy, have an exact strategy, and you follow it. I'm waiting for a little bit more bearish confirmation, price to come down, break this trend line here. Then we'll look for a pullback and try to catch that next leg lower. Dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, another one that's, that's not really my favorite right now. Um, we are in a bear flag, but we could also say this is a trend reversal downtrend, right? We had this higher high, price pull back for a higher low, then we set a lower high, then we broke it and set a lower low. Now we have another lower high, lower low. This could be another lower high, and we could continue this sell-off, right? We're below the 50 SMA, the 20 is below the 50 SMA. They've crossed over, setting structure lower lows and lower highs. This trend line was broken. This trend line was just formed, but we are looking now um, although this could break out to the upside and move higher, I am switching to bearishness on this pair. And although it's not on my immediately being watched for a setup right now, just because I don't like how consolidated price still is, I want to see a stronger breakout. Ideally, something to trade for me would be if, let's say, this week we get a strong break here. Next week, I'll be looking for price to do this and then short it to go short there. That's the kind of setup I would be looking for this pair. Or um, on the other side, if price did something like this, and then pull back. I'll be looking for longs around here to catch the next move up like that. So uh, really, this pair, sit and wait. Look to see what price action does, how it develops, and go from there. Dollar yen. Another one, a little funky price action. I don't like the dollar crosses this week too much. But um, we were in this pennant falling wedge pattern, however you want to consider it, consolidation pattern within an uptrend. We were starting to reverse trend. Touched 20 S 200 SMA and bounced. We're now above the SMAs. Um, we did get a bearish engulfing after price started to show some bullishness. We, this Thursday, we had a bearish engulfing close here, which isn't a very good sign if you're looking to be long the dollar um, versus the yen. But then Friday, we had this hammer candle close. So we're getting mixed picture. Um, as you can see, not the clearest. I would certainly be more long than short right now with this pair, especially breaking out of this um, uh, pattern. We still have some opportunity to move higher to around 113 up there, that resistance. But um, again... Not anything that's showing me my perfect setup, my perfect plan, so I won't be trading it. But just trying to break it down for you guys to see it how I see it. Dollar Swiss franc. This is something on my watch list. It's going to take a few days to develop if my trade is the trigger. But uh, we had a nice trend reversal. As you guys can see, these are the kind of moves I look for. Strong impulse leg. Now what we want is that exhaustion to come into the market. We had a nice pin bar candle here off this support. right? We broke the 200 SMA. So now what we want is a, is a pullback. right? We want a rally within this bear trend now. So we are now bearish. 20 cross below the 50, price is below all three moving averages. The 200 is starting to slope downward. These two are sloping downward. Technically speaking, this is a beautiful start to a downtrend, right? And as we know with trends, some you may, some you may not, um, especially basing off Elliott Wave, the beginning of a new trend is a great place to get in and it's strong, right? So we have, let's just say hypothetically speaking, this was wave one, we have wave two, Wave three, wave four, wave five, right? Let's just say that's what we did. Wave one shows us the trend is starting. Wave two shows us, you know, the pull, first pullback within the trend. Wave three is the heart of the trend, right? That's going to be the longest leg, the strongest leg most of the time, and the, the biggest moves. So that is why when we have these early trend continuation, tri I mean, trend reversal, um, start to new trends, we want to look for that first impulse leg, try to catch the pullback off of that, because that's when we can catch some really strong, really explosive moves um, in the direction of the trend, trading with the right momentum, and um, just trying to catch it at the right moment. So we had an early trend reversal here. We broke out of what was an uptrend in consolidation. But now showing exhaustion, we want to wait for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe this whole week we rally, maybe we just chop around down here, and then we play a breakout of the support. But all in all, we want to wait for a mean reversion, right, for the moving averages to catch up to price. We want to wait for a reversion to the mean, whether it be through consolidation or a rally up to catch and meet the moving averages, and then we want to look to be shorting this pair. So that's something on my watch list, but more so later on in the week. Aussie dollar, 
Again, continuing this nice trend, we've hit this weekly strong 72 psychological and weekly support level. We have broken closed below the prior low, but I do still think after four strong bearish days like that, hitting the strong weekly level, um, we could see a little bit of a slowdown in this. We could see a little bit of a pullback. I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback in the Aussie, um, and then maybe next week we catch some shorts, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on this pair. The Australian dollar, it's its catching a falling knife if you try shorten this right now, and it's going completely counter trend if you try longing this right now. So another one where we want to just relax, let it play out, let our setups form, and um, if there's not a setup there, there's plenty of other players, places to check. So New Zealand dollar, this is a signal I sent out in the group on Friday. I wasn't a big fan of it just on Friday. I like being flat for the weekend, most pairs. Um, so I didn't want to get into a trade that had way over the daily pip level of movement as the target it just didn't make sense but if any of you guys do hold over the weekends or um, got into it it is slightly in profit right now right so we were playing this break of this support here after this basing pattern after breaking this trend move on the daily we had a beautiful bearish engulfing candle off of structure 50 sma really really beautiful technical setup you can't get much cleaner of a setup than that um, so after that bearish candle a lot of times these engulfings will have a little bit of a uh, you know almost like a wick fill where price, you know, rallies up to about 50 to 70% of the bearish candle before then rolling over and continuing bearish. However, this pair did not do that. This pair did continue to sell off. Um, we are on strong support level here, so we might bounce back up into the red before continuing lower. But all in all, this is still a valid trade. I do still like this trade to the downside, and uh, I will be watching for it. And then, you know, we'll be watching for this support down here and see if price is able to break it to set a lower low, or if then maybe we bounce off of that there. But a really nice setup here on New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. Okay, this moves us into our watch list, starting with um, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. We ideally would have liked to see price set this lower low in this downtrend, pull back, and in this gray box here, which was prior structure, see reversal to then continue lower. Um, of course, things don't always happen as you plan, and you have to be ready to adapt. So price did break through that box, but the 50 SMA did, did then hold. And as you can see, we do have, you know, some um, areas of support and resistance in here as well that price is respecting on there. Very strong bearish engulfing candle off that 50 SMA, also this 75 resistance level, um, followed by a second bearish candle. So we are still we are seeing some momentum. I do like this trade to come down to around 7260 level support down here. So if you want to look for shorts within this um, move down here to this target, that could be a, a play you could make, right? So so maybe now you look for some rallies within here to short, rallies within here short, rallies from here short to catch this downtrend as it moves lower. Um, nothing too crazy going on with that pair, but you know we do have some strong bearish momentum in a downtrend. New Zealand dollar, I do love short, as I just showed you guys from that index, so that could be a good place to be looking to add these shorts to it. Aussie yen, this was just a trade we took last week, a nice full take profit hit. Um, with this counter trend line break, very similar setup to what I'm showing you guys here that we're looking for on these other pairs. But um, again, lower lows, lower highs, sit this lower low, pull back, retest the structure, beautiful sell off off there, ripped all the way down. Um, so for this pair moving forward, we're going to look for price to break lower, then pull back and then look to short it again there. Or maybe price consolidates and we look for a breakout of the bottom of that base to then short it to the downside. Swiss franc, Japanese yen. Again, we saw the Swiss francs yet uh, strength last week. Very, very strong moves last week. So what do we do now? Now we look for a pullback. We look for price to pull back off of this higher high. We can throw a Fibonacci level out here to try to help us identify where price could pull back to. So we've got in between 236 and 382, I've got a support resistance level here I drew where price could rally to. But I'm looking for more of a deeper pullback, 382 to 50 to 618 in this range would be ideal. If we got a little bit of a deeper pullback this week, then look for long opportunities. I think that's our play. Um, so again, with this pair, we will be watching for that price to pull back to our area. Pound Aussie, another one like I was just going over. We had a trend reversal, strong impulse leg. Now what? We wait for a pullback, look for price to get to a discounted wholesale pricing. 178 level is what I'm looking for here. Anywhere's in this gray box, we want to look for our confirmations, look for our trade setup to occur, and then try to catch that next push to the upside. Pound Aussie. Pound New Zealand. This could be potentially a um, you know counter trend type trade if you guys do have something in your plan looking for strong pivot reversal and support points where price can hit and reject. 
you know, we got a shooting star candle here off this strong demand zone. You could look for some kind of a setup here. You can see price made an explosive move and is a little bit consolidated here. This could explode higher as well as it could roll over. Um, but this is just another pair that we want to be keeping an eye on uh, for reactions to. We could see this break higher and then look for a pullback to long it. Or, you know, I like sharing some options out there where I have prices approaching strong levels where you guys that are counter trend traders, which I don't recommend, but I know there are some people out there where you could potentially, um, you know, see the eyes of another trader identifying some levels. Pound, Swiss franc. Um, this one we called out last week in the chat as a double bottom formed on the daily off a very strong level. We broke the neckline. Could have gotten in after this first little pullback, but um, ideally the, the setup would be wait for it to pull all the way back to this zone and then catch that next move higher. Could enter with a good risk to reward um, with a, uh, you know, very achievable target. But um, as you can see, we did have this uh, shooting star candle on Friday that is a bearish candle. That could be what gets us our little pullback to then long it. But a uh, nice double bottom here off of this pair off this strong support bullish engulfing candle off the second leg of the double bottom um, so really a nice setup here for this counter trend reversal again this could be another one of those reversing the trend and looking for that nice impulse leg off of that move euro new zealand dollar uh, we made some good money off of this pair all through this bullish move but we are now starting to see some exhaustion again extended from the moving averages beautiful uptrend though higher highs higher lows higher high higher low higher high what do we want higher low, look for a long, catch the next higher high. We have the 20 above the 50, above the 200 SMAs, perfect technical uptrend that we're seeing here. So now what we want is to look for an ideal place for price to pull back to, wait for confirmation that that pullback is ending and showing us that we're gonna continue the trend and then hop on that trend. EuroCAD, this is one of my um, more preferable setups to start this week. Right, so we had this lower low form to pull back for a lower high. Friday, we had this nice shooting star bearish candle as buyers tried to push above this zone. 50 SMA held it. Buyer, as sellers ended up stepping in and taking over. Nice counter trend line here we can use as confirmation. Also have some supports in here we can use for some confirmation. Um, anywhere is in between these two red lines, really. But um, this pair looks likely to be able to, if it breaks that trend line and shows us some strong momentum, to be able to come down back down to around the 148.50 level to be conservative um, for the target. But yeah, this pair is in a nice downtrend, hit a nice zone on a um, uh, 50 SMA and daily trend line. We got a Fibonacci here from our last swing low, puts us right at the 618 and 50 support, I mean, uh, Fibonacci levels. So we got a lot of confirmation coming up here candlestick patterns, support and resistance levels, SMAs trend lines fibonacci levels counter trend lines we got a lot of confirmations going on here so this is a pair we will certainly be watching for this week um but for now we want to wait for our setups to form wait for things to show us what we want them to show us euro aussie another pair here that is in a very strong impulse leg we want to wait for a pullback off that pullback catch the next long higher um, this could be a very good entry point for you counter trend traders. This is a very nice demand zone price is hitting here. As you can see, looking left price hasn't been there for a long time. Last time price was up there, it sold off very strong. Price is now hitting there. It's very extended from the moving averages. So this is a very, very overbought position price is in. We are looking for a, rally, a pullback right in this uptrend off that pullback is where I'll be looking for longs. But if you are a counter trend trader, this could be a nice area where, you know, you could be looking for that sell opportunity. The good thing about a position like this is if you're selling it off of this zone here, you have a very, very, very clear cut position for your stop, right? You want your stop loss to be where your analysis is wrong, not where your mercy point is with your count. So where your analysis is wrong could be right above this zone, right? Right above the prior highs price set last time because if price goes up and breaks above that, that's going to invalidate your idea. If your idea is that this resistance is going to hold and this is going to be a short play, then what would make you wrong if the resistance didn't hold and price broke above it? So that's where you put your stop, up above this resistance, not right above that wick, because sometimes price can tap a little bit above it and then reverse. But if price has enough momentum to blow 15 pips or 10 pips or whatever pips through that level, you're most likely wrong with your analysis. And then you can have a nice risk to reward with the pullback, right? You can have a, you know, 
two, three risk to reward off this pullback. Look for a buy a sell limit order up in here. Maybe you already got in. Maybe you're looking for it off here and try to catch that pullback. Um, again, I'm a trend trader and that's not the way I trade, but I like trying to share analysis for all different traders so everyone can kind of see um, different approaches. But I'll be looking for this to pull back and then I'll be looking for longs off of that. Euro Swissy, another trade we took this week. Uh, again, you guys can see the trend here in the way I trade. You can see my style. Um, all this is covered in detail, in depth in my course, but you can get a good idea of it watching this video. Um, you can see lower low was formed, pullback, all this confluence in here. We had a nice short opportunity in here. Price broke out and shot all the way through the full take profit margins here on the Euro Swiss franc. So that was a nice trade. Again, with this one, we'll be no longer chasing this. Hopefully you're either trailing profits or you made a nice profit already. So you can move on from this pair and wait for price to continue lower, pull back, then look for this same similar setup in the next leg lower. All right, Aussie. Aussie Swiss franc, another one, strong Swiss this week, weak Aussie this week, pair the strength with the weakness, look at the moves you can get, right? So we are approaching a strong weekly level down here at the blue line. We are extremely extended from the moving averages, very oversold price action, right? So we want to wait for a rally. We want to wait for price to bounce and rally and then look for shorting opportunities off that rally. Maybe it comes up to 382, maybe it pops all the way up to 50 or 618, maybe it just goes up to 23.6. But now we want to be looking for the rally in this pair to catch that next leg lower. Aussie Canadian dollar, similar story. Um, the Canadian dollar wasn't as strong, so that matchup wasn't as drastic. But as you can see here, we are moving lower, setting lower lows. Price is breaking below this support. Now we want to wait for price to rally back up, hit support. I mean, hit, yeah, support turn resistance, and then look for that shorting opportunity to continue the downtrend lower. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, another trade we took last week off of a rally within a downtrend, pullback. Price hit our first take profit pretty nicely. We adjusted our position to break even for the second half, and it did break even the second half of the position. So it was only a take profit one hit on this trade, but that was a nice setup as well on New Zealand CAD. And again, for this one, we will be looking for um, you know price to set a new lower low and then rally and try to catch a similar setup. Or maybe we get this trend reversal and we break this daily trend line and we see this pair um, become bearish. I mean bullish. So another one that just showing a trade from last week more so than for this week because there's nothing really on my watch list for that right now. New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. Another one. This would be a great one for if we get a little bit of a rally in the Swiss franc. Maybe we get a little bit of a, a, a sell-off, I mean, in the Swiss franc. Maybe we get a little bit of a rally New Zealand dollar. They come up to this level here. And then if we catch that New Zealand dollar short momentum coming back to the markets and it happens to pair up with Swiss francs strength continuing back into the markets, which they are inversely related with the risk on risk off moves, this could be a tremendous short trade. So we are waiting for price to rally. Back up to here, moving averages catch up a little bit, price to get back into this uh, you know, more parity level, not so oversold. And look for a short opportunity to then continue lower on that pair. Canadian dollars, Swiss franc, another one where you could catch that, you know, reversal trade, stop below this gray box down here, target maybe up at this red line or this red line, and try to catch that reversal trade. Or you could do it the way I do and wait for the rally, wait for this pullback to occur. 20 is about to cross the 50 SMA. Price is moving lower. Had a nice, strong, strong three-day push lower here. So now catch a little bit of that exhaustion, profit taken, pulling back, get back in for that next strong impulse leg lower and try to book some profits off that. All right, guys. So that goes ahead and covers the pairs I wanted to go into today. Actually, sorry, I did not. I wanted to dive into the S&P 500, gold and oil real quick. S&P 500 at all-time highs, pulling back a little bit. I think we'll see a little more of a pullback. Uh, potentially this week before we continue higher, but it's still all bullishness. Nothing but bullishness are we seeing out of the S&P 500. So no reason to be trying to short it right now. We want to be bulls. Gold, different story. We want to be shorting gold. Gold's been in a nice downtrend, falling like a rock, setting lower lows and lower highs. We set a lower low, pull back for a lower high, nice bearish engulfing off of this strong zone. Gold is telling me nothing but shorts. So um, gold, I would be weak. I would be short. I'd be bearish. I'd be pairing that up. Uh, oil can't really say we're still chopping around we thought we were breaking lower and then it rallied strong again under $71 a barrel right at about $70 a barrel um, so really just want to keep an eye a, a nice setup you could look forward to play would be if it did something like this broke above then you can try to catch this pullback move higher or you could try to wait for it to you know turn over and show us that it's moving to the downside 
But um, all in all, we are looking for um, just some kind of idea, confirmation that price is you know showing us it's going one way or another with oil. So that does it with covering all the pairs that we wanted to cover, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Anybody who is watching this on YouTube, I appreciate it. New, newcomers, I thank you for taking the time to watch this. My returning viewers, thank you for the continued support. Everybody else in here is uh, part of a live webinar. We're about to end this recording and jump into that. That is a part of my student course, as well as the new signal room we have here at CoreFX with uh, one of my traders, Savan and I. We started a new program called the CoreFX Technical Training Room. It is a weekly signals group. We share our trade alerts that we take, both of us, we are in different time zones, so we are both active throughout all trading sessions. We share setups all throughout the week. First three-week trial we just got done, and we made 1,152 pips in three weeks, which is a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, feat to have made. So if you guys want to join that, it's $50 a month or 300 bucks for the year. Um, reach out to me. Shoot me an email, Corey at Core FX Trading, or you know, if you're on my Telegram, shoot me a message on Instagram, Core.FX, shoot me a message. Leave a comment on the YouTube page. Any way you guys want to reach out to me, I'm always here. Any questions, any concerns, anything like that you guys have. Any uh, ideas or um, anything you want me to cover in these videos that I don't already that you'd like to see, I can throw it in for you. Just reach out to me. But thank you guys all very much. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Um, try to relax and take some time off the charts and and get some relaxation in before you get ready to uh, dive into the charts when the weeks open back up. But thank you guys. I appreciate taking the time to tune into these and I'll catch you in the next one.